disorders are a leading cause of disability worldwide and affect tens of millions of patients. And unfortunately, a large proportion of patients are actually resistant to any of our current therapies, whether medication or psychotherapy. This number in the case of major depression, for example, is 20 to 30 percent of patients. Essentially, they're out of option. And if you think about something like paralysis, there's largely no pharmacological options. So what do we do for these patients? Now, based on the evidence that these disorders are signs of abnormal activity across large-scale brain networks, one idea could be to try to directly decode and regulate these activity patterns. Now, what do these activity patterns that I'm talking about look like? I'm showing you electrodes that are implanted in the human brain, and these are signals that we record from them. So you can see that these signals are complex, they're noisy, there's no clear pattern in these signals that would, for example, tell me what somebody's mood is in depression. So in order to regulate these signals, we envision building a closed-loop system that would decode from them an underlying state of the brain, let's say mood in depression, and then use that as feedback within a controller that would then adjust the therapy parameters, such as stimulation, amplitude, and frequency, to take the brain to a target healthy state. Now, this is an example of a closed-loop control system. And as engineers, you're actually very good at designing these systems. For example, think about autopilots. So you may ask me, why is it then that we still cannot do this for the brain? Now, the issue, of course, is that unlike an engineered system, we did not design the brain. It's an immensely complex system of over 80 billion neurons with unknown dynamics. And that, therefore, introduces a huge AI challenge to build data-driven models of this complex system and to come up with data collection frameworks that can enable this modeling. And that is exactly what my lab works on. We work at the interface of AI, control theory, and neuroscience to build closed-loop decoding and regulation systems for the brain and enable a new generation of BCIs and neurotechnologies, both for movement disorders, but also beyond for mental health conditions. Now, what are the challenges we have to deal with to build this closed-loop system? Of course, the first challenge is to actually build the decoder. And to do this, what we do is we obtain neural recordings from a network of brain regions. And while we're obtaining these recordings, we ask patients to intermittently report their mood, let's say a couple times a day. And we use these iPad-based self-reports. So this gives us the data to train our decoder. Now, this is a difficult machine learning challenge because if you think about it, you have these very complex high-dimensional data to model but you have very sparse mood labels to do so. So back in 2018, we developed a new dimensionality reduction for brain data, and we showed that using this, we could successfully achieve the decoding of mood from human brain activity, something that was not possible before. So this was very exciting, of course. This opened the door to objective tracking of symptom states. But back then, our methods had to rely on decoding from just a couple of brain regions. So the question is, what if we tap into brain networks and decode brain networks? Can we improve accuracy and robustness and go closer to translation? And that is what we are working on currently. We are developing deep learning architectures that, that extract low-dimensional yet semantic information from these high-dimensional signals such that then we can use these representations downstream for brain state decoding, for example, mood classification. Now, this is kind of in the spirit of what large language models did for language data, except in the case of brain, we are dealing with very distinct challenges. So first, unlike LLMs that have the entire internet to train on, we have limited brain data for training. We have even more limited mood or behavioral labels, and we have noise and heterogeneity to deal with. 
So these are the challenges that we're addressing by innovating on the AI front. Great. So let's say I'll solve this challenge and build my decoder. Unfortunately, this is not enough. Because even if I can decode somebody's mood perfectly, I still don't know how to simulate, to regulate, or change it. So what we need to do next is to build this feedback controller. Now, towards that goal, we've been developing models that describe the effect of simulation on brain activity. And we've been doing this by pairing linear dynamical system modeling with novel stochastic stimulation patterns that we've been developing. And we've shown that these models can predict how neural activity changes in response to stimulation. And this is very promising. But, as I mentioned, we kept the model linear. And there's a very good reason for that, because this linearity allows me to build a real-time closed-loop control system. But of course there's no linearity in brain representations. So can we develop AI algorithms that capture nonlinearity yet still allow us to do real-time decoding and control eventually? So that's what we did in a very recent paper. We did this by developing a deep learning architecture that separates the model into jointly tra trained nonlinear manifold embedding and linear dynamical system layers. And we showed that this captures nonlinearity to improve performance, yet runs in real time. Finally, when you're building these systems, we have to deal with the challenge that these neural recordings do not just relate to the mental or behavioral state that we are interested in decoding or regulating, but rather to a mixture of them. For example, right now I'm talking, I'm walking, maybe I'm thirsty or hungry. All of those states simultaneously exist on my brain. So how do I disentangle only those brain patterns that are relevant to the behavior of interest? Here I'm showing you brain states that give rise to neural recordings. Now only a minority of them may be related to the behavior of interest, let's say mood surveys or arm movement. So what we want to do is to disentangle those green shared behaviorally relevant states. So with this motivation, the past few years, we've developed machine learning model for neural behavioral data that achieved this disentanglement. We've incorporated the effect of input in this model, such as simulation. And very recently, in a paper that's upcoming, we've developed an AI architecture that not only achieves this disentanglement, but also captures nonlinearity and significantly outperforms alternative decoding methods for movements and beyond. And of course, I would like to make all of these AI-based technologies multimodal. Whether I'm talking about multiple modalities of, uh, of electrophysiology, like spiking activity from single neurons or field potentials, whether we're talking about neuroimaging, optical, magnetic, acoustic, or even variable data, physiologics, such as heart rate. We want to fuse information across all these modalities to get the most robust and accurate readout possible. And we are interested in different modalities of stimulation, whether, heart, whether uh, electrical, magnetic, optogenetic, or focused ultrasound. And because these technologies are multimodal, we are hoping that they can seamlessly extend across a variety of implantable hardware devices that are being developed, as well as a variety of brain conditions, whether we're talking about mood disorders, or chronic pain, or obsessive compulsive disorders, or movement disorders and paralysis. So our vision is to develop an AI-based system that not only extracts mental states from human brain networks, but also goes beyond that and actually regulates these states towards potentially transformative therapies. And I'm really excited to actually be working at this interface of AI, engineering, and neuroscience to achieve this vision. And I invite and challenge you to join me in thinking about how we can collaborate across disciplines to achieve these goals and improve the quality of life for tens of millions of patients. Thank you.